The word bedlam, meaning a scene of chaos and confusion, came to English from an infamous mental asylum. Cooks around the English-speaking world wouldn't be donning aprons today if it weren't for a simple mistake. And burrito, translated literally from Spanish, means little donkey. Hi, I'm Thomas, and today we're breaking down the unexpected origins of some of English's wonderful words. Some etymologies are straightforward. Hippopotamus's Greek roots basically mean river horse. The word candidate comes from the Latin candidatus, or dressed in white, because in ancient Rome, people running for office were said to wear especially white togas. Some word origins are a little more unusual, though. Let's dive into 15 different terms and explain, for example, what a seersucker suit has to do with milk and sugar. Remember to subscribe to Babbel if you love words and language learning. Now, let's get into it. Number 1. Bedlam By the 15th century, the hospital for St. Mary of Bethlehem was known to many Londoners simply as Bethlehem. Some residents pronounced it more like Bethlehem or Bedlam. The modern spelling popped up while the hospital was still fairly unusual in its focus on those in need of mental health care. At the time, sometimes patients would have been referred to as lunatics, a word that has an offensive connotation today, but an interesting history. Number 2. Lunatic If you speak a romance language, you might notice a version of the word moon at the start of lunatic. That reflects the now debunked idea that certain types of insanity were brought about by the phases of the moon. Number 3. Apron the word apron comes from the old French napron, meaning a small tablecloth. When it was first used in English, it was napron. Over the years, however, a napron shifted to an apron. That slippery end is actually pretty common. Linguists refer to it as false division. Number four, nickname. Adder and orange also lost their beginning ends with false division, while ek name, or also name, picked up a stray end and became nickname. Number five, yogurt. The word yogurt also comes from a mistake. The English word is borrowed from Turkish, but the Turkish G functions differently, making the original more like yort. Either way, the word derives from a root meaning to condense or intensify, the exact thing that happens when you create yogurt from milk. Number six, seersucker. Did seersucker ever seem like a strange name for warm weather fabric? I mean, what does a seer or a sucker have to do with clothing? Seemingly nothing. The word is a corruption of shir and shakar, meaning milk and sugar in Persian. Allegedly, this is a reference to the alternating smooth and bumpy texture of the fabric. When the British began importing cloth from India in the 17th century, their new pronunciation took root. Number 7. Shampoo Today you know shampoo is the product you wash your hair or carpet with, but its archaic meaning refers to manipulating a person's muscles so they feel good, like a massage. The English language imported the Hindi word shampoo, a conjugation of the verb champna meaning to press or knead. Number 8. Tycoon The Japanese word tycoon was formed by combining two words from the Pekingese dialect of Mandarin, meaning great and lord. It was applied to the shogun of Japan, pointing to his status in the country's 19th century hierarchy. The word wouldn't attain its current definition referring to wealthy and powerful businessmen until the early 20th century, which was perhaps a reflection of the growing power of American titans of industry. Number 9. Honcho Similarly, there's the word honcho. It was picked up by US servicemen in Asia around the time of World War II and the Korean War. From han meaning squad and cho meaning leader, it's easy to see why we use it the way we do today. Also, its popularity was definitely boosted when then-General Dwight D. Eisenhower called himself Chief Honcho in a newspaper interview. Number 10. Tragedy Any unhappy event can be called a tragedy, but it's mostly associated with plays and other written words. But what you've probably never associated it with is a bleeding goat, and yet that's its origin. It comes from the Greek tragodia, which literally means goat song, and there are a couple of different theories as to why. In one, goats may have been a prize for acting competitions in ancient Athens. Or maybe it's that actors would sometimes use real goat skins to dress up as fictitious satyrs. It's also possible that goats were sacrificed in Greek plays before a lamenting song was sung. All we really know is that livestock were somehow involved. Number 11. Nightmare Unless they're chasing you in your dreams, nightmares don't have anything to do with horses. In this case, mare is a derivation of the old Anglo-Saxon word mara, which refers to a demon or evil spirit. It was believed to sit on people's chests as they slept, making them feel like they were suffocating and causing bad dreams. Because of modern day descriptions of sleep experiences that sound pretty similar, researchers think people may have been experiencing a condition we now know as sleep paralysis. Number 12. Ketchup Ketchup, that classic American condiment, has its origins an ocean away in China. 
Kat Chop was its original pronunciation, and Chop still survives in various Chinese dialects as the word for sauce. In its original form, ketchup is actually a kind of fermented fish sauce, a staple you'll find in a lot of Asian cuisine today. The British adopted ketchup in the 1700s with recipes that include anchovies and mushrooms. It wasn't until the 19th century that tomatoes first started appearing in ketchup recipes. Eventually, Henry J. Hines rolled out his distinctive take on the condiment, and the cookout staple we know today was born. Number 13, burrito. I mentioned burrito, a diminutive form of burro, at the beginning. Some people think that the stuffed and rolled tortilla gets its name from a resemblance to the bedroll sometimes carried by donkeys, travelers, and workers rode. Other sources say it's because burritos were sold by vendors who rode donkeys. Number 14, Buckaroo. In old Western movies, you may have heard Buckaroo, the epitome of a certain kind of old American identity, but it's really an Anglicized version of the Spanish vaquero. Vaqueros were horse riding cattle herders and likely had a great influence on what we think of as cowboy culture. Spaniards were responsible for introducing horses and numerous other ranching customs to the Americas in the 1400s. Number 15, Jade. Jade, that precious green gemstone, was historically plentiful in two pretty distant places, China and Mesoamerica. It's the latter that we get the name from. It comes most directly from the French le jade, which itself stems from the Spanish name piedra de hada. Translated literally, it means stone of the flank, and the phrase comes from the belief that jade had healing properties for the side of the body like the kidneys. That association doesn't end there. One version of jade is the mineral nephrite. That prefix comes from the Greek nephros, meaning kidney. What's your favorite word origin story? Let us know in the comments, and if you want more videos like this, like and subscribe below.